What's going on guys, Lon here from Android Authority. And Huawei's P series has always been about redefining style, beauty, and technology. And with their latest flagship, they're looking to take that to the next level. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Huawei P8. Huawei's been known to deliver some very well-crafted handsets in years past, and the P8 is certainly no exception. If anything, this might be one of Huawei's most well-designed phones yet, because it is quite the looker. The P8 sports a unibody construction made of steel, and just like many other phones that feature the use of metal, the P8 feels extremely solid. It's a very angular and flat design with chamfered edges, but the corners and sides have been slightly rounded to make the phone feel more comfortable in the hand. The metal body has been treated with what Huawei calls diamond-shaped blasting that enhances the texture of the metal while also providing the phone with some extra grip in the process. To top it all off, the P8 is super thin at 6.4 millimeters for an overall very sleek and stylish appearance. It's also fairly easy to use in one hand thanks to the slim profile and thin side bezels even if they're not nearly as thin as some of the press renders might have shown. Going around the P8, the left side of the device is completely clean of any buttons or ports, leaving the entire right side to house the power button and volume rocker along with the SIM and micro SD card slot. The power and volume keys are both very clicky, tactile and easy to press, but the volume rocker does exhibit a slight amount of wiggle, but in everyday use, it's not very noticeable. On top is the usual 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the micro USB port can be found on the bottom, flanked by what appears to be dual speakers, but in actuality, on the left one is a speaker and the right one is simply just a microphone. For notification LED lovers, a multicolored one is located up front next to the front facing camera, earpiece, and typical sensors. The display on the P8 is also no slouch. It's an IPS panel that measures in at 5.2 inches with 1080p resolution, and it's plenty sharp at 424 PPI. The 5.2 inch screen will be a pretty good size for most people, especially if you're looking for a more normal sized Android smartphone. And considering how much more battery friendly a 1080p panel is, I don't think there will be very many complaints on its resolution. The screen is bright, vivid, saturated, and offers for some really great contrast and viewing angles and outdoor visibility are also quite good. If the color temperature of the display doesn't quite suit your taste and you want something a little bit warmer or cooler, you can change that in the settings. Although I thought the default out of the box settings were good enough as is. All in all, it's a very gorgeous looking panel for pretty much anything you love to do on your smartphone and the thin bezels allow the screen to really stand out. Like previous Huawei handsets, the P8 utilizes Huawei's own in-house chipset, and considering how well they performed in the past, there's no reason for Huawei to make any changes here in the P8. The standard version of the P8 will be powered by a high silicon Kirin 930, while the more premium version will feature the Kirin 935. Both, however, feature the same Mali GPU and three gigs of RAM. Our review unit is the Kirin 930 model, but functionally, these processors are mostly identical outside of the 200 megahertz speed bump on the 935. Just as you might expect, with killer specs like these, the P8 absolutely delivers in performance. It's very fast and responsive in daily use. The UI animations are nice and clean, apps open and close quickly, multitasking back and forth between applications is snappy, especially with three gigs of RAM, and it handles all sorts of games like a champ without showing any signs of slowdown. There really aren't many surprises here with the P8's performance, and it can definitely hold its own among other 2015 powerhouses. The remaining hardware is pretty standard. You've got the usual Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, NFC, and the P8 supports a wide variety of LTE bands, and I've had no problems using it on T-Mobile here in the States. The P8 also has support for LTE Cat 6 for faster data speeds if you live in an area that can take advantage of it. Storage options include 16 gigabytes for the base model and jumps up to 64 gigabytes for the more premium version with the micro SD card allowing for up to an additional 128 gigabytes, which you'll most likely need on the 16 gigabyte version. The bottom mounted speaker surprisingly provides for some great audio. It's very loud and maintains a very crisp and clean sound without any signs of distortion at higher volumes. It's certainly no front facing speakers, but it's still better than any phone with a rear mounted speaker. Although being mounted on the bottom does make it fairly easy to muffle with the palm of your hand, which I happen to do quite a bit when trying to game or watch a video in landscape.
On the rear of the P8, Huawei managed to pack in a 13 megapixel camera with OIS in a 6.4 millimeter thin chassis without creating a camera bulge, something you can't say about some of the more recent flagships out there. Huawei also claims that this is the world's first four color RGBW sensor, which is supposed to provide for better brightness in high contrast scenes and increased low light performance. The camera application is no different from some of Huawei's previous handsets. It's very similar to Apple's own camera app with a large circle shutter button and the various shooting modes can be quickly toggled by swiping on the display in either direction. Among the more standard modes like HDR and Panorama, you have a few others like Super Night for better nighttime shots, Best Photo, Watermark, and All Focus for adjusting the focus of an image after the fact. There's also a series of live filters available if you want to get a little fancy with your picture taking. Many of these features have been available for a while, but one new addition to the camera experience is called light painting. This lets you capture light trails created by things like moving cars, stars in the sky, or a simple LED bulb. The effect can be really cool, but if you don't have a tripod or a super steady hand, the picture might not come out exactly the way that you want it. The shutter speed is reasonably quick and you can also launch directly into the camera and take a photo in roughly a second's time by double tapping volume down when the phone is asleep. General image quality on the P8 has been pretty impressive. Photos are tack sharp with plenty of detail even when zoomed in and colors are very vibrant and saturated with a really pleasant amount of contrast to make the images pop. However, it does struggle a bit when shooting a subject against a brightly lit background like the sky or an artificial light source, which causes a lot of the detail in the foreground to be lost, but HDR usually does a really nice job of properly balancing out the shot. Indoor shots are pretty good too, and they still exhibit the same level of color and contrast as outdoor shots, although it doesn't seem to handle white balance quite as well as it does indoors. With optical image stabilization on board, low light photos aren't bad either. Saturation does get lost fairly quickly, and there is an increase in noise levels as you would expect, but the image processing seems to do a good job of cleaning most of it up. The built-in super night mode is also capable of taking brighter photos in low light, but depending on the lighting situation, exposure times can get extremely long, and if you don't have a tripod or the steadiest of hands, the photo will just turn into a blurry mess. The 8 megapixel front camera is also pretty solid and should make selfie lovers happy. You've got the standard beautification mode, but Huawei has taken it to the next level with a mode called Perfect Selfie. This allows you to dial in a number of beauty presets that automatically get applied each and every time you take a selfie for a consistent look across all of your photos, thus creating the quote unquote perfect selfie. With a unibody construction and a slim design, the P8 doesn't have the largest battery that we've seen in a smartphone at 2680 milliamp hours, and it's also non-removable, so there won't be any battery swapping happening here. And the battery capacity alone will make very many people skeptical of the battery life, and rightfully so. The P8 continues the trend of a smaller battery in favor of a thinner smartphone, and battery life is merely just average. With brightness set to auto and mostly basic use like texting and social media, battery life for me would range anywhere between 14 to 16 hours off the charger, with three and a half to a little over four hours of screen on time. For light users, this will definitely be more than enough to get through a full day, but if you're the type to hammer away at your phone with a lot of gaming and video watching, you can expect these numbers to drop fairly quickly. On the bright side, the P8 does come with fast charging, a feature that's becoming more and more prevalent in smartphones to help you easily fill up or top off your smartphone in a short amount of time. In software, the P8 is running Android 5.0 Lollipop out of the box, but you'd be hard pressed to notice without going into the settings because Huawei's Emotion UI doesn't adopt much of the material design aesthetics of Lollipop, if any. It is running the latest Emotion UI 3.1, but for the most part, it's practically the same as previous versions. If you've used Emotion UI in the past, this will all be very familiar territory. The icons are colorful rounded off squares and there's still no app drawer, so your home screens will get filled up with apps quickly unless you resort to folders or download a third-party launcher. Many of the staple features of Emotion UI make a return here like motion gestures to answer phone calls by raising the phone to your ear or shaking the phone to rearrange icons on the home screens and a one-handed mode that can be activated by simply swiping across the soft keys in either direction to shrink the screen for easier one-handed navigation. 
The theme engine is also still present here to allow you to quickly change the look and feel of the UI to something better that suits your taste if the default look doesn't appeal to you. The options are pretty limited, but hopefully we'll see some more as time goes on. One of the newest features is called speech awareness, and it's kind of like Moto Voice for the Moto X, except you can only use it to locate your phone and to make a phone call. And the default key phrase is okay, Emmy, but you can pretty much change it to be whatever you want it to be. So for example, if I wanted to locate my phone, all I have to do is say, okay, Emmy, where are you? And as you can see, it'll start to ring and the flash will also go off uh, just in case you happen to be in a dark environment and you can't see your phone. Uh, so that's really all there is to it. The most unique feature in this version of Emotion UI is what Huawei is calling Knuckle Sense. The display is capable of sensing when you use your knuckles and this allows you to crop out specific areas of the screen to easily share or take a screenshot by double tapping. The feature does work, but on many occasions it seemed to have trouble differentiating between my finger and knuckle and would randomly turn itself on. This happened most often when wading through comments on the YouTube app and while gaming, which was frustrating to say the least, and unfortunately there's no way to disable it that I could find. The standard 16 gigabyte version of the Huawei P8 is expected to cost 499 euros, which is roughly $530 US and will come in titanium gray and mystic champagne. The more premium 64 gigabyte version will bump the price up to 599 euros or $650 US with carbon black and prestige gold as the color options. It'll be launching in 35 countries later this month with the UK being one of the first countries and we're expecting to see a US launch in the coming month although this is not confirmed as of right now, but hopefully it'll happen sooner than later. For the most part, Huawei has really hit it out of the ballpark with the P8 despite some very minor software bugs. The design is elegant and well-crafted, the camera delivers some very high quality images, and it has all of the right internals to go head to head with the flagship phones of 2015 at a very reasonable price. Huawei may have ditched the Ascend branding this year, but the P8 is certainly one capable smartphone that can rise up against the competition. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up down below and also subscribe to the channel, which is also down below if you haven't already. And if you wanna see more content here from Android Authority, make sure to check out the links over here on the side. And also don't forget to check out the website as well, androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android. <laughs>